If I put a $1,000 bottle of the Chateau Margaux Red Blend from 2010 in front of you, you wouldn't just pound it from the bottle. You'd inspect the label, turning it over in your hands to read as much about this French wine as you could. You'd smell the cork and find a nice wine glass worthy of such a vintage. You'd swirl it around in the glass, paying close attention to the color, how it drips down the side, and the smell. Since it's such a big event, to drink a $1,000 bottle of wine, you would take extra care to evaluate every detail of it because you are about to experience something very special. Everybody's Gone to the Rapture is that bottle of wine. You are meant to take your time, inspect everything, and really savor the experience. However, by the time you actually get around to drinking it, you'll realize it delivers a product not much different than the $12 bottles sitting at the end of the aisle. Not bad, but you're let down that it's not at all what you'd hoped for. Everybody's Gone to the Rapture puts you in a small town in the English countryside during the 1980s. You find that it is completely abandoned, and as you explore, you slowly unravel the events leading up to something catastrophic. The game isn't just about finding out why the town is empty, but also about getting to know the townsfolk and their lives before the event. Although there are really two main characters, the game is split up into six chapters that each tell the story of a townsperson. Each one of those people plays a major role in the story, and as you progress, the stories of the townspeople become intertwined. It is through this character-driven narrative that you are able to answer the larger question of what happened. Almost immediately, you realize there is a supernatural presence. Although you can explore many aspects of the town and its buildings at your own pace, you're ultimately guided by a mysterious light from the beginning of the game until the end. As you explore the world and follow the light, you are able to look back in time at conversations held between the townspeople. Don't be so hard on yourself. We've all had rejections. You haven't. <laughs> Come on. We'll look at the figures, tighten up the data, and resubmit. This is the primary way you get your information about what happened. It's a unique storytelling mechanism that had me captivated at first, but ultimately led me to confusion and a loss of connection. The problem is that when you observe these flashbacks, the characters are illustrated by swirls of light. You don't know what anyone looks like, so unless you can recognize their voice or are able to internalize the barrage of names thrown at you immediately from the start, you will get confused like I did. I feel like I missed out on some important plot details because of this. After finishing the game, I found out that you can turn on subtitles and they include the name of the person who is talking. This would have been incredibly helpful for me at the beginning, but I typically play games with subtitles off so I can focus on what's happening on screen. In this case, I was penalized for doing so, which to me feels like a design oversight. Also, although the voice acting is excellent, I found it difficult to connect with blobs of light. Showing me their expressions and body language as they talk about a deceased loved one or interact with their husband's mistress really would have gone a long way to crafting a more impactful story. Instead, this lack of connection and previously mentioned confusion led me to disengage with any story not immediately connected to the disaster. This is a shame because I feel like the characters and their stories probably are interesting, but the way they are told detracts from them. On a positive note, the town looks and feels great. Any scene that took place under the nighttime sky was immediately captivating. Also, there's a lot of detail in the town and houses. Although you can't interact with 99% of the environment, the town feels like it was alive and lived in before the disaster, which makes it all the more curious why it's now empty. Smoking ashtrays, splotches of blood, and scattered dead birds all contribute to the story and vibes of the game without having to say a word. Finally, special shout out to the music and sound design. The piano and string soundtrack definitely contributes to the atmosphere and punctuates certain moments, and sound played an important role in leading me around the town. Gameplay elements are particularly simple. It's just walking and interacting with audio logs. There is nothing wrong with that, but when a game is so simple, each element must be implemented flawlessly for it to succeed. Unfortunately for everybody who's gone to the rapture, the most important element is completely broken. Walking is incredibly slow, slower than any human would realistically walk. There is a run button, but it's disabled most of the game and only worked about 10% of the time I wanted it to. In a game where you're supposed to explore every square inch of the town, this is a problem. There are dozens of houses and buildings for you to check, but moving between them is a boring chore, especially when a lot of those buildings end up being locked and you can't even enter them. Slogging from one building to the next was met with disappointment so many times that I eventually stopped exploring and simply followed the main storyline. That's a pretty big fail considering exploring is the only thing you're supposed to do in the game. Never have I been so frustrated and demotivated to explore, and as a result, I'm fairly certain I missed certain details that could have made the story a lot better. 
This is a major game design flaw and one that ruined almost everything else in this game for me. Everybody's Gone to the Rapture has potential. The storyline and world set up an experience I was excited to have. However, the way the story is delivered and how you experience a world completely ruin any momentum the game has after its first couple hours. It pushed my patience past its limits and didn't let me connect to the game. It saddens me to say this since I respect indie developers taking risks to push the storytelling envelope, but this game is a swing and a miss and one that is not worth your time.